Hi, and welcome back finally to the workshop for episode 33 of the Rickenbacker 62012 string build. I've been wanting to film this episode for three weeks now, um, but unfortunately I've been suffering a little bit with a chest infection. You can probably hear I'm still a little bit croaky. This video has been quite difficult to make. There is a lot of coughing and snuffling that's been edited out, but we've got there in the end. On a more serious and really, really sad note, during that time we lost the amazing Jürgen Zola. I did know that he'd fought leukemia several years ago and that he'd gone back into hospital for some more treatment around that. And sadly, he didn't make it through that treatment. And I'm finding it really difficult to process. I'm finding it quite difficult to deal with. I spent a lot of time over the years chatting with Jürgs, exchanging pleasantries, cracking the odd joke, whatever, in the comments and on Instagram, etc. And losing him has been a little bit of a struggle for me. However, knowing what I know about Jürgs, I don't think he'd want us mopes in and feeling sorry for ourselves. He'd want us to crack on and get some bloody guitars built. So that's what I'm going to do. But the Guitar Builders Collective, of which Jürgs was a big part, has also decided that they're going to try and raise some money for leukemia research so that hopefully some good can come out of all this. And to that end, they've produced a really quite nice range of Jürgen Zola guitars merchandise, which is available to buy. So I'm going to drop a link in the description to the merchandise store. So please, if you can, just dip into your pocket a little bit, treat yourself, get yourself a nice little t-shirt or something, and hopefully we can raise some money for a very, very good and important cause. Okay, let's get on with the build. Okay, so having made some absolutely solid progress in the last episode, getting this pick guard and the pickup sorted out, first thing we need to do for this episode is to strip all of this off again, get the guitar back to basics, and start to get ready for my absolute all-time favourite part of guitar building, carving the neck. With that all stripped off and the guitar set up in my neck carving jig, next thing I need to do is do some very quick marking out for a centre line on the back of the neck and also marks for the first and the twelfth fret positions. And with that done, we'll then be able to start working some of this material down and getting this a little bit more like a neck. Okay, so with those two positions now marked onto the neck, next step is to take the two little templates, one for the 12th fret position, one for the first fret position. And in the first instance, I'm just gonna take some kind of very rough rasps and basically take the material out of here until the template fits on both these positions. And then we can, from there, kind of mark this neck out and start to take out the rest of the material in between. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. We'll get these first and 12 fret positions done first. Thank you. 
Okay, and that's kind of that first position. Kind of very nearly there. There's still a little bit of cleaning up to do to get it down to its final kind of size, but I want to do that with a finer tool than the rasp. The only difficulty I'm having here is, obviously this is a bound fretboard, so I need to be keeping away from that binding with these rough tools because it will kind of bugger it up. So I'm gonna leave this one now. I think that's close enough to where we need it. So we'll get the template for the 12th fret and do exactly the same trick down there. Right, so they've gone quite quickly actually and we've got those to where we need to be. So next up, we need to mark this up for what I'd refer to as the faceting method of getting a neck carved on. And basically what that involves is from my center line, I'm gonna put some lines in halfway to the outside of the neck. And then I'll repeat that on the side of the neck. With those lines all drawn in, I will then create a flat face between the line on the side of the neck and the first line on the top of the neck. And I'll do that on both sides and that will give me my first set of facets. With that done, I will then repeat that operation, halve those distances again on every facet that I've got and carve those down again. And then it's just a case of basically repeating that process until we've got something that resembles the shape of the neck we want. And then we can just use files and sandpaper, etc., to just refine that into the actual neck shape that we're after. I've been through this a number of times before, and I think as I go through and demonstrate it, it'll become very apparent how it's done. Now, normally, I would be having at this with my Shinto saw rasp, which if you haven't got one of these, get one, they're absolutely brilliant. But today I'm also going to be using a spoke shave, primarily because it will enable me to get some much more sexy footage, and I'm sure you'll all appreciate that. Okay, let's get measuring. Okay, so that's the first couple done. I've marked out this second one here. So I'll just work from the outside in now on both sides and just keep repeating this process until we're somewhere near. I'll be honest, once you've done this a few times, 
you kind of get to a point where you don't really need to be marking it out quite so much you just kind of know you are where you need to be and you can kind of do it a lot more by eye but if this is your first neck carve you're probably better off to kind of mark it up at every stage until you get a little bit more proficient at it so again I'm just going to start with the spoke shave and start working this down you might notice as well that I've got this spoke shave set up in such a way that it's cutting much finer at one side than it is the other. So I can rough down here and then when I get a bit closer to where I need to be, I can actually come in with the other edge and put a much smoother, finer cut on. Okay, so I've carried on with this, going at it with the, primarily the Shinto, and then one of these Iwasaka carving files. And I've got it kind of somewhere near now. So my next step is to just get, this is some 60 grit. This is really rough on a block, and it's important to use a rough grade at this stage because that will help you keep everything straight. If you were gonna use a, a finer grade, you wouldn't kind of get the cutting power that you need. So realistically, it's just a case of kind of going at this until you've taken out all of the little lumps and bumps. And you can check that with a straight edge. See, there's a little lump in there that we need to get out. Now ideally, I would have liked to have gone at this further with the spoke shave to get it nearer the final shape. But unfortunately, all of these little laminations had the grain running in the opposite direction. So you couldn't really use the spoke shave because regardless of which way you came at it, you'd be tearing out one piece of wood or another. But that's just the way these things go sometimes. It's not a massive deal. It's taken me ever so slightly longer to do it with the Shinto, but it wasn't a huge loss, so not really worth worrying about too much. So I'm just gonna carry on now and get all this smoothed out until we're somewhere near the profile that we want. And then once we're there, we can start working our way through the grits to get this into a nice finished state. Okay, and there is the bulk of that neck carved done. I've checked it, we're about a millimeter fatter than we need to be in this area. And kind of also around about the 12th fret. That's not a problem. We've got a lot of sanding to do on this. And I also, I need to kind of carve the transitions. And once we do that, we'll probably have to take a little bit of more meat out of there anyway. But all in all, that's come up really, really nice. I'm very happy with it. It was a bit of a pain having the grain running in opposite directions made it a touch more difficult. But other than that, very happy with the way it's gone. Now from here, the next logical step is to start getting these transitions carved in, which is kind of quite a job in itself. But I also need to figure out what I'm doing at this heel end. Um, I've left a lot of material on there. Obviously, 12 strings, you're not gonna be up the dusty end much, um, but having a great big fat heel there isn't gonna help if you do ever venture up there. So I need to figure out exactly where I'm gonna be bringing this heel down to. And of course, putting in this carve 
at the headstock end, putting our volute in, making that all nice and pretty. However, all the dust in the workshop at the moment is making me struggle just a little bit. So I'm gonna call this one a day now. I'll be back very soon when we can break the spoon gouge out and get these transition carved in. I'm gonna drop a link in the description for the merchandise so you can all support Jürgen's very, very worthy cause. Until then, all the usual stuff, like if you've liked, subscribe, etc. And I'll look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.